Hey everybody, this is Praxis, and today I'm working on the garden area here at the homestead. And the garden is really as much a part of the homestead as the building and the structure and the nails and the concrete and all that stuff. The point of that is to keep us alive, and the point of the garden is pretty much the same thing. So we're working on this part of the homestead today. And I think I've got the whole uh, basic garden plan put together for this year. If you look over in the back corner over here, uh, there is a bunch of garlic coming up here. This is the stuff that looks like just a bunch of really tall grass. We planted the garlic uh, back last fall. Uh, the rule of thumb for garlic is you plant it on Columbus Day or Indigenous Peoples Day if you don't want to be a genocidal maniac. Uh, so that was sitting there all winter in the ground and it was the first thing to pop up. And it's really nice to see that kind of stuff pop up first thing in the spring. Uh, right next to it, we've got two rows right here of uh, asparagus. And the asparagus, I don't think this is going to be the permanent home of it. You tend to buy asparagus, you get them as roots, and you put them somewhere and you let them grow for like three or four years. And then you can first uh, start getting your harvest. It's 2022 right now. We'll start getting harvest from that 2025 or so. But I don't think this is its permanent location. Uh, I, I don't know where I'm going to put the uh, asparagus long term, but I just want to put it in the garden, get it growing bigger, bigger roots on it, and then I'm going to pull it up and I'll move it someplace later on. I've, I've got a similar sort of situation over here. Right in front of them, we've got some Jerusalem artichokes in this area here. Uh, I, again, I don't know if that's going to be the permanent uh, situation with Jerusalem artichokes. They're kind of like potatoes, though. I mean, you, you plant the bulbs or the tubers, and they grow and they multiply, and you eat some of them, you save some of them. Uh, so, you know, it's in the nature of those things. You can put them in one place, and it's easy to move them around later on. Uh, right behind the asparagus, I've got two rows of potatoes. Well, actually, like two and a half rows of potatoes here. It's kind of a mix of, uh, I've got some uh, red potatoes, some purple potatoes, and... I think Yukon Gold is what I've got there. And I just bought those potatoes at the grocery store, just a bag of organic potatoes. The reason you get organic potatoes is because they aren't sprayed with any kind of a uh, growth inhibitor. Uh, reg regular conventional potatoes, they'll spray them with a growth inhibitor so that they don't sprout while they're in the grocery store. That makes them last longer on the shelves. Uh, organic potatoes aren't allowed to do that. And the benefit is you can grow them really easily. So we've got a couple of rows of those. I'm putting in tomatoes in this area right here. Uh, and then in this back area, which I have not really weeded yet, this back area is going to be uh, squash. I'm going to have, I think, butternut squash. I really want to do butternut squash and pumpkins, but the problem with doing two different types of squash is they really easily cross-pollinate. Look what I'm doing with my hands here. It's like it's all illustrative. Um, they re they cross-pollinate really easily, which isn't a problem for the fruit that you get this season, but the seeds that that fruit would bear. Uh, let's say I, I grow a butternut squash and I take the seeds out of it. If it got cross-pollinated with a pumpkin, the next generation of whatever that grows is going to be some Frankenstein monster. Maybe it'll be even better than both of them, but I don't know. And uh, the idea is you want to keep those things separate. I haven't figured out exactly what I want to do for that. I think maybe I'm going to put some stuff way off in the woods. There's a clearing over there. I might try that. But I've done that in the past, and animals come in, and they eat it all. So I, I'll have to, like, I'll have to figure that one out. I haven't figured that part out yet. But some kind of squash back over in this area. On the back uh, edge of the garden over there, you see some sticks coming up over there. There are peas across there, snow peas, snap peas, that, uh, that kind of stuff. And then this entire triangle, which is new, and you guys saw it in an earlier video a few days ago, uh, this is all uh, beans, it's all pole beans. And I've got all the sticks here, and I'm going to be putting some twine around it so it can all go up there. The nice thing about the pole beans and the snap peas, even though they're both part of the legume family, they don't, uh, they don't cross-pollinate with each other, so you don't have to worry about that. Although I've, I'm a little bit curious whether the peas will cross-pollinate with clover which is in the pea family. I don't know. And some clover, you know, this is red clover, and it's, I think, not toxic, although I don't really ever eat that kind of stuff. But some clovers are toxic, so I'd have to really look into that. Uh, although I, I hear a lot of people in the area, they, they grow their snap peas, and they don't have any problems with uh, cross-pollination. So that's what we're doing. I'm using these tomato cages right now to get ready for the tomatoes to go in. I know sometimes you can uh, put steaks and uh, twine or something kind of like this, but I like tomato cages for tomatoes just because yeah, I think they're really easy, and I can use them year after year. And I thought today would be a great day because it's 90 degrees out and uh, just it's a great day to be outside and just sweat. Makes you feel alive. <laughs> That's it. Thanks for watching.